What's going on everyone? It's Bales and welcome back to another AFL Fantasy Trade Talk. It's Wednesday, it is ahead of round 15 which is the toughest bye week of the four bye rounds and thankfully the final bye round then we'll get back to some normal football with nine games next week but it's important because uh, yeah we just can't ruin our teams this week. I know there's a lot of premiums on buy and a lot of coaches are maybe considering some premiums to trade out which some are warranted but then some obviously we've got to Make sure we keep in our sides and not ruining our team. But let's get stuck into the most in traded in and out players of round 15. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who um, coaches are looking to bring in and out of their sides. Kyle Lohman is the most trading player at this uh, point in time. 7.2k coaches are jumping on him. I like him as an option. He looked pretty good on the uh, on Friday night against Sydney. Um, obviously, we've just got to make sure that he does keep uh, his spot in the side, which I think he will. Um because I think Brisbane, it, well, obviously with Rich and Gunston being out, I think Lohman's almost half replaced um, Gunston in that role. So, um, yeah, I think he will his spot, and I do like him as a target. Um, when I go to my trades after, I actually don't think I can quite get to him. I think I actually need the cheaper guy in uh, in the third most trade, in which we'll talk about in a sec. Elliot Yo, so 5.1k coach jumping on him. I like him as an option. Back-to-back 90s and an 84, I think, before that. So three good scores in a row. Obviously, he had his buy. He's got Sydney's week. I think I've got a decent enough run coming up as well. He's cheap. He's, what, 603K? No, 605K. Um, break even to 42. Let me let me just have a look at these fixtures. So, yeah, he's got the Saints next week. It's a great matchup, um, especially if he's playing in that defensive line. He's got a good run here as well. We know that he can be in, like, score like a top six defender. Um, the, obviously, the issue is his, his durability. I don't mind jumping on him this week because, at worst, if he if something did happen, he hopefully won't score for you anyway. So if you've got a plan in place made for next week, if you can somehow maybe loop him on your bench like to make sure if he if something did happen, it wouldn't um, impact your scoring going forward. But I do like him as an option. He's cheap. He might make a bit of money and score pretty well. So I'm looking at him personally um, this week. Ryan Marich, I think, is also another good option. It's obviously between him and Loam, a lot of coaches are deciding between, or maybe potentially bringing both in. So over 5,000 coaches are jumping on him as well. Um, the Funny enough, with my trades, uh, I'm doing a downgrade, and I actually need Marich to do the trades I want. I've got 5K left, and there's just a little bit too much. I can't. Qu- I think I'm at like 6K off getting um, Loman. So I think Marich has got the better job security. I think Marich will be in the team, um, at least for the short term, for the Eagles, whereas Loman, obviously, because Brisbane is such a... Stack squad, we just don't know next week. Like, he could even be out of the side this week just because they have got a lot of good players. So, something to know. I think Marriage got better job security, but Lohman, I think, will be scoring more. So, if you want the guy that's going to score more, I think it is Lohman. But if you want a guy maybe that you've probably got a little bit better job security, maybe it's Marriage. But I don't mind either. They're not obviously going to be huge. It's not going to be averaging, like, 70 or anything like that. They'll probably be more the 50 or 60 range. Um, Marcus Winhager, I do like as an option. If you can get to him over the other guys, I would prefer to go to him. He is up now at, th- I think it's 380 um, odd, ca- 375. So he went up 31K this week. He's got a low cap break even a 16. Got a good role at the moment. If you can afford to bring him in, I would be doing it because at the moment, I think I'll be ending the buys with just the one rookie on field, and it's him. It's like, and he's not really a rookie anyway. He's been in the system for a few years. He's only dropped in price because he was a sub. So. He's going to be my worst player on field post the buy. So if that's the case, I'd still like the play if he's you're going to be your worst player on field. A lot, of, a few coaches might want to get him on the bench as a good sort of loophole option, sort of mid forward might be able to be a good um, safety net in case something was to happen to someone on field. But yeah, I do like him as an option. Five thousand coaches are doing that move. Angus Sheldrick, if you didn't jump on, I think he's the pick of all the rookies this week just because of that negative break even, negative twenty one break even. He went up sixty two k this week. Even if he gets a 60 this week or a 50, he's essentially going to go up about 70-odd K anyway, or 60-odd K. So he's going to go up a lot of coin. And especially if he plays the next two weeks, he could be up near that 400K mark, which would be fantastic. Be able to downgrade him, get a almost 200K, and you'd be able to use that for an upgrade. So I do like him. And if he didn't jump on last week, I think you've got to jump on West Coast this um, week as well. It's a good matchup. Ben Keys. Now, this is interesting. 3.8K jumping on him. He's in my trade plans at the moment as well. I think it's between him and Yo for me. I'm going to pick one of them. I think I've got keys at the moment just because obviously there's less of the injury risk. And because he's at 675k, if he was to go get like a 90 or 100 this week, he's going to be over 700. And I feel not as good paying over 700k for keys now. 
compared to Yo. If Yo was to have a good week, he'd still be 6.30, 6.40. So I'd be happy enough to pay that next week if, if that was going to happen. So I prefer Keys this week. But then again, obviously, just sort of hearing, obviously, Tom did not quite sell Ben Keys on the podcast. I don't know if that's maybe just jumping at shadows and I should just bring Keys in anyway because at worst, he'll get you a, a 50 and you can just trade him anyway um, after the North Melbourne game if that was to continue for the next two weeks. But I still like him as an option. I think worst case, you can trade him in a fortnight. Best case, he's going to average 90, 95, even 100 maybe, and be in your side for the long term. So I do like him as an option. Jasper Fletcher, now obviously uh, he looked really good. Just depends. I don't think he was actually on Brisbane's injury report, which was, oh, nearly dropped my phone. Just checking the injury report here. I'm pretty sure that he was fine, which is good. So... I also do like paying up for him because he looked really good, and I think he could be in Brisbane's team for at least another few weeks. So, yeah, nothing here on in Brisbane's injury report about Jasper Fletcher. So, yeah, I like him as an option. Good matchup this week against Saints. Um, 296K, break even 20. Um, again, if you can if you can pay up for him, um, he's obviously going to have better scoring than like a Loman and a Marich. Um, I think I'd go Sheldrick, though, ahead of him if you can, just because that that negative 21 break even. And... Probably would go Winhager over him as well if you didn't go him and you can get to Winhager. If it's between if you've already got Sheldrick and you can only get to about three hundred K, I think Fletch is a good option. So I do like him. Darcy Cameron, great option, three point seven K. I think I would probably pick him over Ben Keys because there's just obviously less of that question mark over his role. He will be playing that number one right role for Collingwood. He's also a good backup for if one of your ruckmen goes down, you can put Cameron into your ruck line. You can then trade out someone and you don't have to mess around your rucks. You can just flick Cameron in there and then um, go and bring in a print forward or midfield or defender or whatever. And then also, it just if there's a late out during a week and for, it's only for a week, you can bench an English and play Cameron there and play a different rookie. So I do like Darcy Cameron and I think he's going to score quite well. I think he can average about that 90, 95 mark. If like, he's, what would he go? What, 109 and 95 or 96? in his two games before the bye, and he had the line share of the ruck as well. Yeah, look at that, 109.96. So he looked good in those two. Game time has been obviously rising. He had, he has got stuck on the bench in the two games, which I don't know if that's just a rotation thing or it's just been unlucky. But, yeah, I do like him as an option. John Dawson, obviously, I can't really say much else. He's a great option, 3.4K jumping on. He's expensive, but you know what you're getting. You're getting the probably, I think he's the number one defender, averaging 110, great role obviously his scoring's been amazing i think gone what one score under 100 since round three is that right yeah since round three one score and that was up against the bulldogs at mars so it's obviously a tough ground score up but a lot of these scores are like it's very similar to like a bont like this is a very similar one to bont a lot of these 110s to 120s the one score under 100 so i do like him as an option and especially as a defender like yeah lock it in Brad Crouch is a good option as well, 853k, um, 3,000 are jumping on him, and I do like him underpriced. Uh, he had that weird patch in the middle of the year, which I don't quite know exactly why he had that um, that run, but like he had like the four weeks of, of su- five weeks, so sub-100. I'm not sure why, but then obviously three games in a row, hundreds. 69% was a bit worrying. I think he got stuck on the bench at times, which I don't know why, but I still I like him as an option. I prefer him over guys like Lockie Neal and, and whatever. I just think that... Crouch can average 110, and he could be, I think he could be close to the top eight midfielders. If not, could even sneak in there if he keeps going well, especially with a guy like Jack Steele struggling at the moment. So I do like Crouch. Clayton Oliver's the big one. Um, again, I'll talk about him more with my trades, but he's one I'm really eyeing off. Um, I know he's coming off an injury, but this is. The, I think this is a good time to get a guy like Clayton Oliver because you've got three trades to get up to him. Hopefully he plays. Um, there's been a bit of sort of rumours that, oh, he might not play, but he apparently was going to play pre by had that infection. So the hamstring's not an issue. So it's just if this infection thing's here. And for me, that I'm sure he wouldn't be training if it's still there. So he should be fine. I, I expect him to play. I w- don't really see a world where he doesn't play. But I think the, the, the coach and that are just trying to play it down um, so the media sort of don't sort of hype up Oliver's going to play. And all of a sudden, if he doesn't play, then they look like twits. So, um, yeah, I think Oliver will play. And at the moment, he is um, coming into my side. So we'll talk about trades after. Um, and I think he's a great option as well. Nearly 3,000 jumping on. And it's going to be a good pod as well because there's not going to be like 10, 20, 30,000 coaches jumping on him. There's only going to be probably not even 6,000 coaches jumping on him. Um, and it'll probably be less. So I do like him as an option. And he's so expensive, it's going to be harder for people to get up to him. So 
Jack Sinclair, good option as well. He's been good last two weeks. He would have put up, I think, I believe, a 120 score on the weekend. Um, 42 at quarter time, just that weather came, and he just sort of slowed down because the marks weren't there. So back-to-back hundreds, though. Got Brisbane this week. He's got West Coast next week. I do like him as an option. So if you can bring him in and you need defender, I think he's one of the best ones out there. Zach Merritt, now 2.4K jumping on him. I'm not... Don't get me wrong, Merritt's been amazing. And if you want to part for him, I think he's still a good option. I'd prefer Oliver if Oliver plays. I'm just a bit... He's got a tough run coming up. He has had an easy run, which is where he's obviously got his big scores. He's been great all year. But obviously, Richmond, North Melbourne, two of the easier sort of teams to score against. Um, and he's got Freo, Port Adelaide, which aren't the easiest matchups. Um, could cop a Willem Drew tag and maybe an H tag if he comes back in the side here. Ben Keyes will probably go to him here, maybe an O'Connor or something like that. And then, obviously, Dogs is, is not easy either. So, yeah. I, again, I don't mind paying up for him, but and because this is the time that you can start paying up for these guys, I'd just prefer maybe a colour up a couple of other options. Um, and I think we're about to come up to one couple. Uh, Nick Martin, I'm not sold. He had an easy run with four tonnes. Um, he's on a wing, so his role can be volatile and... Like I'm just, I don't think he'll be able to sustain a, a ton sort of like average. I think he can average 85, 90, but I don't think he can average 95 to 105. I just don't see that happening. But if you're keen on him, then you can jump on. He is an inf- he is at 799, so you're bringing him in to be a top six forward. There are so many forwards this year that are that have got a lot better roles and probably have got higher floors. I'm I'm just not sold personally. I was sold if you brought him in around here, but like, look at this, like 63, 77, 61, 66, 42 in round two. So, yeah, for me, he's an amazing player. I think he's really good, but I wouldn't be bringing him in um, personally. Rory Laird, great option. Um, I, I know, I'm never going to say Rory Laird's not a good option. Um, yeah, uh, over 2,000 coaches are bringing him in. He did say on radio last week um, as they went into the buy that this was going to be really good for him because it was going to be a good mental and physical break. So if, like, I'm expecting him to come out and, and be very, very good for the rest of the year. They've got a pretty nice run as well, the Crows, from round 16 really through to pretty much the majority of the year. Like, what, Port, obviously tough there. Giants can be tough as well. Maybe Sydney, but then Sydney have been giving up a few points. Brisbane at the Gabba as well, but... I think I see him doing pretty well in all of these. I expect Swallow to go to him here because he always does when he plays lead. But, um, yeah, I think he's a great option. I see him averaging at 115 plus on the way home, being a top four mid. So if you can bring him in, I'd prefer him over Olive. I'd prefer him over Mera. I'd prefer him over pretty much, I think he's probably my number one mid target to bring in off the bye. Um, I like him a lot. Chris Petrarca, now he's interesting. So he's been very good. He hasn't gone under 100 much, but he just seems to find a way to get it done, and he's only had the four games under 100, and one of them was 99, which you can almost say is pretty much 100 anyway. Cup of 80s here, he was scoring better almost when Oliver was in the side, so you can't sort of use that um, logic with, like, oh, he scores better without Oliver. So if you think he's going to be top eight mid, I don't mind it. Under 900k, he's a bit cheaper. Um, I do prefer if you can get to a guy like a Laird, or even, I do prefer Oliver. I know he's more expensive, but I do think, do think Oliver will average more. So, yeah, I don't mind him. Tom Mitchell, also not a bad option. Um, he's got some good scores. I would sort of slightly flag that they have come against uh, easy opponents. So a 112 against North Melbourne, 124 against the Eagles, and then a 121 against Melbourne, but that was without Dugowie. So I want to see another week from him, but then again, he's going to be over 900K if he has a good week. So if you're keen, I don't mind it. I don't mind the play because he's a lot cheaper than the other guys. And worst case, I think he averages 100 for you, and you can – Luxury trade him um, sort of in a few weeks. Like him versus Brad Crouch is interesting. I'll probably lean to Crouch, but it is a good debate there. And then you've got some other guys here, like your Bailey McDonald's. If he plays, I don't think he will. Harvey Harrison played two games for the buy. I don't think he'll be there. I think Elliott will come back into the side, and I think Harrison will be unlucky to get out, uh, be out of the side. Nick Dacos as well. If you can get him, he's a great option as well. And Lockie Neal, I don't mind, but he's a bit more expensive now. You're almost paying that sort of top eight midfielder um, money. Um, I would rather a guy like a Brad Crouch, a little bit cheaper. Most traded out plays. Um, so a lot of these guys obviously look at the, mostly on by. George Wardlaw, over 12,000 coaches jumped off him. Yep, he can obviously go with a 31 before the buy, and he's got uh, Luke Davis-Uniac coming back uh, post the buy. So, 
yeah, I'd be happy to jump off. His, his game time, they're, they're easing him in. Um, obviously, it's his first season, so I don't see him scoring. He only scored that, what, that 97 because a lot of their midfields were out and sort of he just had a very, very good game. I don't see him scoring much over 70 in many games, so I'd be happy to jump off. Um, and I think his cash is not going to be, not going to make a huge, more, much more amount of money. Jack Zeeble, be happy to jump off him. I, weird thing, I don't know why he only played, what was it, 64% game time on the weekend? Yeah, like that's about 20-odd percent less than what he normally plays. I'm not sure what was up with that. I don't know if he's carrying an injury or something. I'm, I'm not sure, but I'd be happy to jump off anyway. He's done his job. He's been fantastic. A lot of us jumped on him under 700K, and he's made a lot of money. He's been very, very good for um, us, so I'd be happy to jump off and get him up to a, a better a midfielder forward whoever you, or defender, whoever you can get in. Chincotta, yep, I'd be happy to jump off him. Obviously, it's his buy this week. It's a perfect time for a guy like him to go, so I'd be trading him. He's at, what, 4 three ninety six. Good price. You can get yourself at least 160k even going down to a low man if you can sort of flick some DPP stuff and make that happen. Sam Walsh, I know some coaches probably have to trade him out. 4.4k jumping off. I just don't see the value of trading him because he's got he's, there's not a heap of value. Like He's, he's still 828k, so there is a bit of value, but... 133 break in. I think the buy is going to be good for him. Um, he's got a great matchup round 16. So if you can keep him, I would. I still think he's going to be in around the top eight midfielders. He hasn't been good of late. I think he's been either carrying something plus Colton haven't been good besides last week. So I would want to hold. But if you want, if you're, if you don't think he's going to be a top eight mid and you want to jump off, then I'd be think that would be uh, not a bad move if you want to go up to another midfielder. Like you could go him to a lad. Only cost you about what 120 odd k. Um, and yeah. So if you want to do that, then feel free. Harry Sheasel, I think it's time for him to go. He's a first-year player at the end day rookie, so I'd be happy to jump off if you can get a better player. He's If it's between Zeeble and him, you trade Zeeble first. My eyes are really sore. I don't know why. Um, no idea. Um, if you want to, I'd keep Sheasel before um, over Zeeble. Um, yeah, I'd trade Zeeble and keep Sheasel. But if you need to get rid of both, I'd be happy to get rid of both as well. Ryan Angwin, uh, yeah, he can go. Obviously, not a heap of money on his head, but he's obviously got the buy. If you can go him down to a to a Marich or a Loman and, and do your upgrades on the other end, I'd be happy to do that. Will Ashcroft's a different sort of story. 2.7K jumping off. He is playing this week. So he's the only one, actually, from the list so far that is playing that's been traded out. Saints this week is a good matchup, but obviously it is at Marvel. We know he doesn't score well from the, away from the Gabba. I'd be happy to move off him if you've got at least 19 or... Tw- sorry, I'd probably say at least 20 this week. I wouldn't move him off if you've got 19. I'd just hold him. I'd get rid of someone else. But if he's your worst issue and you've got 20 playing, I'd be happy to get rid of him because at the end of the day, he's dropping cash. He's under 700... I oh know he's just over 700K now, sorry. But a 108 break-in, if he drops a 60 or a 70 this week, he's going to be 680. You've, you've got more money on his head this week, so I'd be happy to move off if it works for your team. Lockie Whitfield, yep, he's got to go. Been spending for a game. He's out for the next two weeks, so I'd be happy to jump off. He hasn't. He's been. He's been very good, right? So probably exaggerating. He's been good, but hasn't been like that smash pick. So take out that score of that one thirty there. It's a lot of eighties and nineties, and obviously a couple of low hundreds. And a lot of them have been saved in the last quarter by a good score. And coming back um, after their buy, even when Whitfield comes back, he's not going to be the number one because they're going to have come in, they're going to have Ash there, Himmelberg if he's playing back. There's a lot of guys back there. So, yeah, I'd be happy to trade. He's out for the next two weeks. Bailey Smith, I'd be happy to trade as well. He's been very underwhelming since trelaw has been back in the side. An average of 90. Yeah, look at this, 67, 90, 81, 70. That's not top six forward. Rookies, can like a Humphrey's been putting up pretty similar numbers to that. So I'd be happy to trade. These were the three weeks that Trelaw was out as well, all hundreds, and then back to sort of just that 90 um sort of average so yeah i'd be happy to offload him as well drury i'm not as keen the only reason i'm not as keen to jump off him is because he's not worth anything it's sort of a wasted trade going him to to a rookie right it's probably you might get an extra number but i'd prefer to get rid of a van ruin if you still got him and you can get more cash from him and do a better upgrade i don't see the point really in training a guy like drury now because he could be useful in the back half of the year if he doesn't play he could be a red dot Sort of, you can loop maybe a couple of guys and whatever. So I, I, I think it's a bit of a waste. But if it works for your team, then you then you can trade. He's on his bike at the end of the day. He's not playing. Samson Ryan, yeah, good time to go. I don't. If you've got enough players this way, I don't mind going him down to a, like a Max Heath, banking 
200k and then using that. So that that's a play, and I don't mind that. Matt Johnson, I, he should play this week. I, I'd be surprised if Fred drop him, but Frio sort of are going through a bit of a tough run at the moment. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I hope he stays in. Um, I don't know if I'd be trading him out, but I guess if he's not playing, you can maybe trade him out over Wardlaw. Maybe if you can make the same upgrade, because at least Wardlaw's probably going to play next week. He might have a cover. What if Johnson gets dropped and doesn't come back in? So, But I expect him to play. He should be fine, and yeah, I don't know if I'd be trading Tom Green, I wouldn't be trading. I know nearly 2,000 coaches jump off, but I know a lot of coaches do have a lot of primos on buy, so someone's probably got to go. I don't know if it'd be Tom Green, but obviously some coaches are deciding to get rid of him. Juan Francis, it's sort of perfect time for him to go. He's been pretty solid, actually, of, of late, I think, from memory. Oh, no, take out. No, no, hey. Maybe I'm just thinking of these scores. He's been playing good football, but he's just obviously, yeah, the 34 there is obviously not great. I guess from round 7 through to, what, round 12, he was pretty solid. Didn't go under 70. Um, so he was solid. He's made a little bit of coin, but, yeah, it's time for him to go. He's on by. Jack McRae as well. I'd be keeping him. Um, he didn't have a good score last week because he got tagged by Liam Shields. But, hey, again, some people are going to have to maybe trade a premium or two. And Jack McRae is probably not the worst trade um, premium to trade. I'd rather trade out him over Tom Green and guys like that. So... I don't mind it, but I would still prefer. We don't want to ruin our teams post buy. Um, Rory Atkins as well. Joel Jeffries um, injured, and I think he's out for like six to eight weeks. So I wouldn't be trading him now. He's got Carlton this week. I'd be keeping him for one more week um, and trading him around 16 if you have to. So I'd be holding um, personally. Um, but then again, if you've got if he's like your worst player on your field, and you can get him up to a primo, then again I don't mind it. But if you've got other issues, I'd probably fix them first to be honest. Um, Sisley, obviously, he's got um, the three-week suspension, so he's got to go. But at least he's got a lot of money on his head at 934k. He's going to be a guy we're going to want to target, though, when he comes back from suspension because he's got a really nice run of fixtures from round 18 onwards. He's got a good run, so I'd be targeting him when he gets back, but he can go. Um, Finn Callahan as well can go. Um, he it sort of It's good. You can sort of shake hands and say, thanks for the ton. Um, and I'll trade you. You've been really good. He's made a good amount of money. He's up to six 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 now. I, th- I got rid of him. I think it was after the Hawthorne game. I think it was like round. Was that round five? Get around. Yeah, I got a red round that they got sixty one, and he went on a good run after that. Or did I keep him for that Brisbane game? No, I got rid of him for that game. So yeah, he's been very very good this year, um, especially from like sort of round four onwards. But yeah, it's time for him to go. He's done, he's done well. So. Yeah, they're the most trading as well. There's going to be obviously a lot of primos here and a lot of different um, players being traded out, which obviously uh, depends on sort of teams and team structure. But yeah, there is a world where most players can be traded. I just wouldn't trade um, some of these premiums. In terms of my top five targets for the week, so this is this is a pretty tough week because again, it's going to be very team dependent. You're going to need different positions, but I'll just go based, try and go based on if you don't have these players and, and it fits anyone. So... My number one target, I think it's probably Sheldrick. I think Sheldrick would be my number one if he didn't jump on, just because that low break even. Cash gen is so important for this back half of the year to get these final upgrades on field, and we're going to need players that can make cash quickly, and Sheldrick is one of those players. He can make 100k in the next two weeks if he plays. I think he he, he, he surely holds his spot this week. He played well last week. Wicks is out. I expect him to hold at least one week. If not, he should be in the team at least long longer. So... Yeah, I think he's number one just because of that low break even because it's so important to get him in. Number two, um, I think I've got Darcy Cameron at number two. I, I like the value. The ruck forward stats, as I mentioned before, with good flexibility in terms of like a good sort of safety blanket for, for your rucks in your forward line. So I do like him. Um, so that's why I think he's number two. He's got a pretty nice run coming up. So I like him. Number three would be... Oh, it's, it's tough. It's like, it's who do you go out of Yo and, and Keys? That's the thing, because both both are good options. Um, and I think both would be in my top five just because the value's there. Because not everyone can get up to an Oliver or or a Laird or, or someone like that. So you're going to have to, some coaches are going to have to go for these value plays. I'm going to go Keys just ahead, just because of the sort of less injury risk and. Worst case, he's got North Melbourne the week after Collingwood. You should put up a solid score there. If not, you can trade him in a fortnight, and he would have made at least made a little bit of cash. Whereas Yo, you can wait a week. Um, 
So I'll put Yo at four though because I still do think Yo's a good option because a lot a few coaches did jump on keys already and some coaches got Cameron. So Yo's probably the next sort of valley play. So I think Yo would be number four who I'd be looking at targeting. I do like him if he can stay on the park. I think he can put up a 90-odd average and, and be a good uh, money maker. And then you can upgrade him at some point to um, a Doherty or something like that or a Sicily later on um, down the track. Number five... Is it Brad Crouch? It's probably Brad Crouch for me. I just like again, it's it's the value play. I like the value of of him at eight fifty three k. Um, he's got a nice run coming up as well, putting up good numbers. I do like him. Just again, the, it's just the value for me this week. I think value is quite important still. Um, but again, it's it, again, it's a hard week because if you can part for premiums like a Jordan Dawson, like a Clayton Oliver. Roy Laird, I think they're great, all great options, and I'd be targeting all the, all these sorts of guys if you can get up to them. I'm just sort of going on because not a lot of coaches have got um, a lot of cash in the bank, so they're going to have to go for value play. So I've gone a bit more value in terms of top five this week, um, but I do like these other guys like your Olivers, your Dawsons, your Laird. So my trades this week, though, so I'm currently looking at going a, uh, a Van Royen because I'm going to have 21 at least this week if everything goes right. If, if Johnson gets uh, dropped, if a Chester gets dropped, I'm still going to have at least 20. So at the moment, I'm going Van Royen down to Marich because I can't actually do Lohman. Um, I need the cash um, for, for getting Marich, which I'm fine with anyway. Um, I'm then going, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head, yeah, uh, award up to Ben Keys. So getting that uh, locked in, which that's why I'm also happy to jump on a Keys in that scenario because worst case, he's going to score the same as what award or would anyway. So, Keys in for me, and then the other trade, uh, I've got Whitfield, who's been suspended for a week, so I'm going him up to Clayton Oliver. Um, I expect Oliver to be named. If Oliver wasn't to be named, I think I worked that away where I think I'd get like Brad Crouch, Ben Keys, and like Elliot Yo or something. I think there was I can either get all three or something like that I worked out, but that's an option I'll, I'll play with if Oliver wasn't to be named, but um, we'll see. But they're the trades I am originally got at the moment. But yeah, so that's uh, that's the trade talk for Wednesday. So let me know in the comments below what trades you guys are doing this week. And let me know if you've got any trade questions. I can answer those in the comments below. Um, so put them down there. If you did enjoy the video, as always, make sure you leave a like on the video. Hopefully we're going to hit, I think, 30 likes for this video. Uh, obviously, trade talk is the, more, is the most popular video on the week based on the season. So appreciate all the support you guys show there. So yeah, 30 likes. If you can hit that, that'd be fantastic. Uh, also, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're on our way to 1,200. I think we're 28 away now, so we're closing in. If we can hit that, that'd be very much appreciated. So, um, yeah, as I said, I've repeated myself, but thanks for all the support um, that you guys show on the channel. Turn notifications on so when I go live or upload any other content, I'll be live on Friday night for the Twitter space with Tim, the AFL Fantasy Fanatics Twitter space, where we uh, just essentially just chat everything before lockout. So, Looking forward to that, um, and then maybe not, I think I'm actually going out Friday this Friday night, so there might not be a watch along, but there could be one for Thursday, keep, um, that's why you should follow all my social media links in the description below, I'll let everyone know if I'm going live, if not, worst case, we'll be going live Saturday night, so make sure you tune in um, to that and chat fantasy uh, as we watch the game together, so looking forward to it, so thanks guys for tuning in as always, um, and I'll catch you guys on Friday evening, so... Uh, enjoy the next couple of days, guys. I'll chat to you guys then. I'm out. Cheers.